Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again today on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. We redid Van Gogh's painting, I'm going to show it to you right now. Bam, did it in my style. Changed the colors in the bushes and stuff, made it much more vibrant and colorful. Did this nice, real thick kind of palette knife sky to make it look sort of like his. So if you want to learn how to paint this painting right here, stick around. We're going to show you what colors you need, what brushes you need, and uh, we're going to get going just like this. Hey guys, back again today. We're going to do a Van Gogh painting. It's called uh, We Feel the Cypress. I'll show you the picture. Okay, you saw the picture. I'm going to do it in my style. I'm not going to try to copy that painting. I've got a few different color greens here from the Magic Fly set. The purple, the pink, and the rose from the Magic Fly set. This orange red, also Magic Fly set. The rest of the colors are the Bob Ross colors. Uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Sap Green. Oh, this crimson is from the um, Magic Fly set as well. Uh, Prush, uh, Thalo Blue, actually. Midnight Black, Titanium White. Touched it right there. Bright Red. Uh, Cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. Okay, got a lot of colors today. I'm gonna try to make it super colorful, but sort of in the same style that uh, that he did. Make it at least look the same, but in my style. You know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. You, specifically, you know what I mean. So, to try to match that picture, we're gonna get the phone out so we can look at the picture. There it is right there. I'm gonna try to match that sort of uh, so we're going to need a blue sky, a little bit of yellow ochre in the grass, and green in the trees. I might throw some other of these little colors in there to kind of make it pop. So we'll see what it looks like when we get done. Hey, you guys can even see it right down there. Okay, so we're going to do the phthalo blue because it's the lighter it's the lighter color of the blues, right? It's not as dark as the Prussian blue is. And with this canvas, we're going to have to do a lot of holding because it doesn't really fit on my easel. So we got a little bit of the black mixed up in there. Always going to cover over the sides. I might as well do that first, right? This needs to be a very light color blue because we're going to have blue in the clouds and everything else. So we just want to get this top bit covered right here. Nice and blended out. And then with the rest of this blue that's on the brush, we're just going to go down. It's going to become very white, right? It's not going to be very blue up in the sky. We're going to bring all that down. Just make it very light towards our horizon down here because we're, again, we're going to fill it full of clouds. A little bit of blue over there. A little bit of blue over here. While we're doing this, you guys can always go to etsy.com slash shop. Where is it? Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. You can buy the hats. You can buy the shirts. You can buy the paintings, you can buy the prints, pillows, phone cases, everything else that I offer. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? Might as well just go over this whole thing. More canvases and the more stuff you guys buy from my shop, the more canvases I can buy and bring you guys free videos each week, right? Even if you're not interested in buying Share the link, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Maybe someone else will buy something. I can continue to buy canvases and we can continue to paint every day, right? Well, twice a week anyway. All right, I think that's a pretty blue sky right there. I'll throw a little bit of the midnight black up here in the corners. You know, we'll just go across the top with that down a little bit. You guys know how I like my skies. I just I can't just paint a blue, regular old blue old sky. Always got to have some kind of depth and shadows or something in it. All right, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, go over the whole thing. We're just using the one inch brush right now. Maybe use a fan brush and maybe a liner brush. Maybe that little oval brush. We might try that or we might stick with this one. You know Gonna go right into our Jasco brush cleaner, right? You guys can use low odor mineral spirits, uh, paint thinner, Dawn dishwashing liquid and water. And then we've got our trusty old beater bucket. It's got a golf ball basket down at the bottom. And that just helps keep the house clean while I just beat the go on this brush. Get it nice and clean, right? Look at that. Always dab it off on a paper towel. Okay, we'll stick with this brush, actually, and we're going to make our clouds out of it, okay? 
So, it's a lot of movement up in the sky for these clouds. So we're just gonna try to mix a little black and blue, just right here on the brush, just a little bit. Pull it down. Just nice, little bit of color on the brush there. And it looks like there's one up around here. And all we're doing is just these base shadows, right? A little bit of black and blue. A little dark spot over there. Maybe it comes down around. You never know, some of it might be covered. Other bits you might see, so you never know what's gonna be in there. So throw them in there just at random, right? Just cool little bit of a shadow up in there. There's like a dark bit over here. That looks pretty good, actually. Looks like <laughs> a representation of what we're trying to get anyway. And then we'll just come in and just lightly, otherwise we'll just blend them all away, right? If we do it too, too heavy. So we'll just lightly come in and just blend those shadows out like that. And I'll wash our brush again. Dab it off on a paper towel. All right, now we're gonna come in Looks like he's got a little bit of blue and white mixed in for a couple of the clouds. Not too blue though, we don't want it to match with the sky, right? You just kind of mix those up a little bit. Some of them are white. It even looks like in his he's got a little bit of green up in the sky. Like some phthalo green or some kind of something or other. We'll go in, we're going to take our palette knife, just like we kind of do on the mountains, and just drop some of that kind of bluish cloudy color up on these up here. We're going to come back in, just very lightly, very lightly, you don't want them to go away, right? Just going to mix those clouds up a little bit, throw them off to the side, over here. Again, the more you, the harder, the more, the more pressure you use, the more they're just going to literally disappear, so don't go too crazy with it, okay? I'm going to take some of this pure titanium white over here, and just make this honking cloud, just nice, thick bit of, of paint. I you want a lot of paint in here. It kind of goes up like that. Just a little bit over here, maybe some of that blue with the white over here. Another gigantic kind of white cloud that comes up from the bottom. This thing over there. Another whole big bit of white over here. You know when you paint with me, you use a lot of white paint, okay? A bit of that, bit more of this blue up in here. Maybe we'll just use the palette knife for it. Make it stand out. Something like that. All right, and the cool thing about painting is you just play with it until you like the way that it looks. I kind of like that. We'll come back in, we're just gonna start mixing up with our one inch brush again. And where we put it on the most thick, no, it's going to be the widest. Bring it down, just not, not fully mixing it away. Remember, we just want to kind of disturb what it looks like. Give it these nice kind of swoosh, like air marks in it, right? These cool little things. Your brush will do some amazing things all on its own. You don't even have to, you don't even have to do anything. It'll just do it all for you. So try something new like we're doing today. We'll try something new. Nice thick white textured clouds. Okay, back and forth very lightly. Very lightly. It's actually look really good. I kind of like that. Take the littlest bit of blue in here. Just kind of give us some shadows in our cloud. You guys know how I like to paint clouds. Kind of very lightly mix it up because remember it's so thick and heavy on here. You don't want to mix it too much, you're going to blend that whole cloud away. Get rid of some of those heavier blue areas right there. And we we'll come back in with our white. It just gives us these shadows and stuff you can play with. Very lightly, very so, ever so lightly. Don't even really need to do much. Swipe those across. It's 
take a step back and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good, actually. Looks like a, a circular little shadow bit over here. So just kind of add that in. Again, we're just playing with it until we like the way that it looks. Doesn't have to look exactly the same, right? We're doing it in my style. So it doesn't have to look perfect compared to his. Pretty sure he did it all with the palette knife. Let's see. She looks pretty good. I just want these nice, soft, far off clouds back there. Again, the more you mix it, the more it's just going to turn into your sky, right? It's not going to have any definition of clouds, it'll just be all sky. So, Let's see if we can't make some of these flip up certain ways. We'll maybe go this way with this one. It's so thick on there. So thick. All right, let's take a couple more. We'll take some of this shadow color down in here. Just mix it up. Mix it up, but don't over mix it, right? Don't want to go nuts. Don't want to go nuts. Pretty good compared to what he's got. I need to take some more of that white, and just throw it down in here, just in case we need to have spaces to cover, right? It's looking pretty dang good. Okay, he's got these rolling mountains that kind of come in from the side, so we're going to mix up our mountain color. You guys know how we do. A little bit of black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of crimson. Mix it all up. Throw some titanium white in there. It seems like these magic fly colors are a little bit more wet than the Bob Ross paints, right? They're real dry and thick. When you mix it with these magic fly colors, they get a little thin. So throw some white in there to kind of thicken it all up depending on the paint you're using anyway. Plus, you always want to put a little bit of white in your mountains. Makes them look kind of further away, you know, unless they're right up close to you. Put some of that dark in there. And then we're gonna come in. It almost looks like his mountains are like clouds. They get these rounded shapes. So we want it real thin. Dips down, maybe it comes back up again. We can bring it up a bit higher. Again, they don't have to be perfect. And we want to scrape off all that extra paint. You can see how much paint we have on the knife up here. Really want to scrape it all off. See how I'm holding the knife flat to the canvas, not, not up and down like we're going to break on the mountains, like sort of flat to the canvas so we can really scrape off all this excess paint. I just want it to be far off and into the, into the background on this one. I'll save that, I'll probably use it later. Now we're going to take our you know, one inch brush, this tiny little sucker. to mess up our shape too much. By grabbing and pulling out, right? Pull it out and you want it nice and soft down around the bottom. Just like that. Just mix it all up so it's nice and soft. Just kind of floating out there in the middle of nothing, right? Like I always say. Just kind of 
taking this and twisting it. You can see how it grabs and twists right, to keep us along those bumpy rolling edges like that without coming out of our lines too much. Only worry about what the top edge looks like, right? Don't care what anything else looks like down here. We're just about worried about the top edge. I like that. Fill it up. Fill up the bottom down there. Now you don't see a lot of these mountains. They kind of start up here. Just a nice little rolling kind of hill. So what we'll do is take our brush and we're going to wash them. And then we're going to come in with our yellow ochre. Let's see. Let's see what this looks like, right? We're going to try. We've never painted this before. I usually always paint my videos the first time right on camera so you guys can learn with me, right? If we make a mistake, we'll go back and fix it. Let's see. Looks like we got some yellow up in here. Which is going to kind of get mixed in with this gray color. These far off, like, rolling hills back there, right? That looks like too bad. Mix it with a bit of the titanium white so it stands out a little bit thicker. A little bit brighter. Alright, we got that. I mean, this whole thing is going to be covered in... Whoa! It's going to be covered in uh, yellow grass anyway, so we might as well just kind of fill up the rest of that with this yellowy color. Leave a bit down here for this green bit of grass that's going to come over here. Got a little bit of green bushes back in there. We only really see this top section of the of that yellow. It looks like in his, he's got this dark line that separates. Just with the knife, we're just going to make this kind of darkish. I use the same purple that we made up for the mountains. You can use black or, you know, a, some kind of a dark color to make that. But I just decided to go with purple. Purple and the yellow won't mix together and make green. That's what we don't want in this one right here, anyway. Now we got this kind of a dark line that's just separating these two bits back there. At least that's what it looks like on his anyway. <laughs> Sitting down here looking at it. You take, and you can get a little bit of your purple down in here too because it's going to be shadows for our, our grass and stuff. So What I do want to do is put me snow. I mean his doesn't it's hard to tell what his is actually. If it's snow or if it's not so maybe we'll put a bit of snow on ours just to just to see. Why not? They're really light though. Real light bit. Take some of that green, we'll throw that in and see what that looks like. See, I don't like the way that looks. So if you don't like it, scrape it off. And with that purple color, it should all just kind of disappear. But we leave these with no highlights on them. And with no highlights, if anything, we'll put... Looks like his has a little bit of blue in certain spaces. So we'll put some blue down in there. little differences in color, right? Just so it's not the same old kind of purpley color. We'll add some blues and stuff. Looks like even the top of one of them is a little bit darker than the rest. Some of that blue in there. Just in different places, right? Doesn't all have to look the same. And all have to look the same. I like the way that looks right there. And wash off that brush again. Remember, guys, subscribe to my channel right down here in the bottom. Uh, share the link. Post it when you post your version. 
and uh, help me reach more people, right? I can only reach so many. I'm counting on you guys to reach the rest. So subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see how many people we can get to come to the channel and paint every day, right? That is the goal. All right, let's stop messing about. And up on that thing, we're going to go there. Put some trees in. Put a couple of bushes underneath. So why don't we try that? Throw some of these little far off bushes back here. Like so. There's a few more over there. Just these nice, real textured, thick bushes, right? And we can go back over and highlight them. I just use the dark purple uh, out of the, the set, the violet. And there's a few more underneath, but let's make our tree. It's kind of difficult about painting a, a commission or painting from a photo. You kind of got to make it up as you go along, you know what I mean? Just like I do most of mine anyway. We make them up as we go. Get some real dark, thick paint right down in here, right? Saving it from the little purple area that we had before. Some of that blue, we can throw some of this purple in too. Some of the dark sienna even. Just mix it all up, maybe some of the sap green. All these real thick colors, right? Thick, dark colors. I'm going to make these trees out of it. Come down like so. And then we're not going to make his trees exactly. We're doing it in my style, right? So might as well be my kind of trees. They go almost all the way to the top, these suckers. Yeah. Let's get another one off to the side, little guy. showing you guys where it's at. Alright, we'll come down. It's back and forth. Got this green kind of real thick textured area to our you can even do it like this, I guess if you go up like this. You can do these kind of sort of shaped trees. spaces for our big bushes down around the bottom, right? Come over like that. Again, I'm going to put up a picture right here to show you what we're trying to, you know, have it look like. Same pine trees that I always paint. I'm trying to make them sort of look similar to his. There's going to be some bigger ones over here in the front. Far off, kind of greeny, sort of grassland back there. Again, he uses this, this like almost like this little line, a separator line between each color. Almost like it was illustrated, you know what I mean, when you get that dark line around each little thing. We've had another bit of a mountain come up over here. It's all good, we can always fix it, right? Okay. Now he doesn't really highlight those trees a lot, but we're going to. Otherwise, why'd we get all these beautiful little highlight colors out today, right? So let's go in. We're going to highlight the sucker. A couple different color greens. Get some of that dark green in there, too. That phthalo ish green. All right, we come back in. Just kind of almost like we're making hash marks for the, the far off forest. We're just kind of doing it like this. I kind of like the way that looks, actually. That's really neat looking. Get a little bit of darker color on this guy. Just so they're different, right? I want them to be different. This guy's over here. 
That's a pretty close representation of what we want to get. Especially since we're doing it in our own style, right? You don't have to copy me. I'm really not copying the picture, so. I'm really only using the picture to lay out our scene, right? And then we're kind of figuring out new ways to do trees that we've never done before. doing that. I just freshly clean the brush and then I use it and I gotta clean it again. Okay, that's a beautiful little scene right there. Looks like he had a bigger, like a taller hill back here. But you know, canvas size is never perfect so you kind of have to, you know, judge and, and make changes and do stuff on your own, right? Mix the sap green and the dark sienna right here just to get this dark color. And we're going to go through and just kind of pop in some of these little darker bits of bushes. Just want to make them nice and thick and textured. All right, leaving a bit of that yellow back there those off to the side. Let's grab a little one more over there. Just because we want to. Remember we got our beater bucket. You can find it at like 4 minutes, 15 seconds to see what we're doing when we clean the brush, right? We can just take and we'll just very lightly at different angles kind of pull these things out. See how we've come, started up here, then we've come down, then we kind of come back up. Just making these little like J-shaped for Josh, right? J-shaped little swipes. Swipe it off into the distance. Don't want to get, don't want to muddy up this too much. You don't want to have it go too dark. It's going to be hard to kind of put your yellows. You do want it to be a little darker than the than the original yellow ochre. Otherwise, we won't be able to put any highlights on it. But you don't want to go too crazy. This thing actually, it's like these far off trees that come up. And then we can take and put some darker colors beneath it, right? Just some shadowy bits of some darker little bushes that come in the front. Get these guys down here. Again, when we're doing a photo, you're just trying to imagining sort of how the, the initial artist would have done it, right? Or if you're doing a picture, you start from the very back, your sky, your clouds, your mountains, your trees, and you kind of move forward in layers, right? And that's all we're trying to do is get some layers in there. Especially, I'm sure he did it on a bigger canvas than 11 by 14. But I'm going to start using these trees in, uh, in other paintings that I do because I really like the way those look right there. Remember, all we did was take our, our fan brush, and instead of turning it or making downward trees or upward trees, we sort of did it like you would do the far off trees in the distance, right? And just kind of chopped it in ever so often. All right, let's see if we can't throw some highlights on. A little bit of dark, a little bit of white. This lighter color, we'll put another bush down here. Take some of our liquid white down in here, get some of these greens. All right, just kind of mix them, tap it in like that. All right, we're gonna tap it in, see what she looks like. Remember, don't cover up all of your dark shadow bits, and you want to have different colors. All right, don't want them to all be the same color. Like that. Get some of our thick sap green up here for these guys. Some liquid white with that. Just kind of have them make them, you know, stick to our our canvas, stick to our thick paint we got on there. A little bit 
more liquid white. I'm trying to show you guys how we're doing it here. A little bit of that into our liquid white. One direction, we're going to tap it in, right? So it's very wet. So all you have to do is just very lightly touch this. You don't want to smush it in. You just want to very lightly touch it. And that way, the, you know, the light paint ends up sticking to the dark paint over there. It's so thick that uh, you just very lightly touch it. Stuff will stick on there, right? If it doesn't, if the if your your brighter colors don't stick on to the the darker, thicker, wet paint, then you need to thin it down with some more liquid white or paint thinner or whatever you want to use. So you don't need a lot. See, we just went into the paint thinner right there. Just want to tap it so it's nice and textured. Come back in, and the paint thinner will keep these colors. You know the same color that they are in the palette. If you mix them with your liquid white, then they're going to start to change and become much brighter. So if you want to have kind of darker highlights, then just use your paint thinner back there. Get some more liquid white right here. And why not? We'll throw some of these prettier colors in there. Mix it with the pink, kind of dab it in so it's nice and textured on here. And just every so often with this pink, it's so pretty. And you want to keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and then it just ends up, you know, <laughs> too much, right? Let me try some of this rose color down here. It's like a darker pink color. Put those on the bits in the front. All right, not too much. You don't want to cover up all your shadows, remember. Dab that off. We'll just take this just because it's a smaller little brush. We'll just pull these down a little bit. There we go. Mix them in. change the color, right? I really like those little pinkish colors in there. Really like it. Take some of our cad yellow. This really bright. Mix it with the liquid white. These really bright little yellow bits of flowers or something like that. You don't want to do too much, right? You don't want to over mix them. You don't want to do too much. I don't know how well you guys can see that. When I zoom in, it's going to look really cool. Now we're going to throw another brush down there. Into this kind of mountain color that we made. Leave some of the shadowing back behind there, right? This one's a lot closer to us. This guy, pull him out a little bit. You can see by making these little J-shaped moves, right, at different angles, it leaves us with more layers. Mix that out. On this guy, I want this bright pink, maybe this bit of rose color mixed in with the pink. And we'll go right there on the top. Don't have to do too much. Right? You want to save the shadow. You don't want to kill it all. Now it's looking very bright and pretty down there. Like this, this whole bunch of flowers that we got back here. It's looking really good. Darker bit over there. We've got our line of trees back here. A little dark line like our little illustration. Cool thing. Be careful when you go back, right? It's very hard if you make a mistake to cover it. You're gonna have to change your whole front view. So 
Don't go too far back. I was missing that bit of yellow hill that's back there. We think we covered it up a little bit. Just very lightly come in and do that. Put the bushes over here. Remember, you always want to cover the sides because you never know how they're going to hang it. And if you have differences in color that you can see when it's hanging up on the wall, it's going to make you want to turn around and see it. Got a little yellow over a bit of grass over there. Now we got a little bit of this green, a little bit of the yellow. Sort of mix them together. This bit in the front is more of a green grass type of thing that we'll focus on in a minute. And we got to put our other other trees over here. And what it looks like to me is that the wind is blowing so hard that these trees are like almost blown over. And it almost looks like a big bush, the, uh, the shadow. Take some of the black and some of that purple, maybe some of our sap green, mix it right here on the brush, tap it in, right? Go pulling down and then we're going to tap it in, make it nice and thick and textured, ugly. Over here, we'll just kind of pop in these little tree shapes. Just like that. Again, you want a lot of paint. You want it to be very thick and textured paint right here. That's for that blue. So when you pull the brush away, it leaves these, you know, textured bits that you can see from the side, right? That's what you want. Looks like they're blowing to the side. <clears throat> you can't really see the pair that are behind the two or three and that are in the front. So what we'll do for that is just kind of, just so it's easier to put our highlight color on, I'm just going to kind of make little circles out of these guys right here. Right? And I think we might be getting ahead of ourselves here. Our little meadow isn't as yellow as I want it to be, right? So we're going to take and do that. Grab our two yellows right here. That's why we put them so close to each other. Just kind of dab them in the same way. You can see the texture on the, the palette, right? That's what you want on your painting back here. And then why don't we come in and we'll just make these little, just these little rolling kind of meadowy. Things. We're leaving bits in between. In the front, he's got them like swiped up. Give you the effect of this tall grass. But only in the front. Come back in very thick. same angle that we've been flowing. I can cover over some of these. We're in the shadow back there. Right now it looks like we've got these bits of tall grass that are layered and coming towards us, right? Take some of the shadows that we picked up from right here. Just put them in every so often. Doesn't need to be crazy. We can just very lightly swipe on these, some of these, make them a little bit taller. Look like these wheat fields, right? bits of shadows, right? So we're going to flick them forward. Get some of our brown mixed in with some of our white. We'll throw a couple back in here. Ooh, look at that. That is a cool little technique right there. All we did was just kind of fill the brush, right? And then come in here and just push against it so the color that was up here in the brush, instead of down on the tip, kind of stuck in. Looks really neat. Cover the bottom over here. Put some of our little colors on the side. Pick some of those up like they're far away. Get a couple more of these little brown areas. That looks really cool. It's like layers of 
of kind of flowing grass, right? And then we'll put a little bit of liquid white with our yellow, kind of chisel it, not too much, not too chiseled, but chisel it down. And then we'll just very lightly gonna swipe up, not trying to cover over all those shadows. And leave some of them in there. Now it looks like different heights of these wheat grass fields, right? chisel it down a little bit and make just a just a couple trunks. You don't have to really see them. Right, just a couple back there. These ones back here we're just gonna do the tops of right, again we're not trying to cover all the shadows. So leave bits of dark in there. We just need to see the tops of those and then these ones underneath are gonna be a different color. <clears throat> clouds came out. They're not as as thick as his. Maybe we can come back up and make them a little bit thicker. But for right now, we got these other sets down here that are a little bit brighter, a little bit different color. Right? So we're using our brightest greens for that. too many branches or anything, we're just kind of throwing them in there. These are even more bent. Like they're just blowing in the wind. It's so strong back there. What we didn't do was put a last little bit of our mountain back in here. Didn't really see that it went all the way to the edge. So seen my Devil's Tower video when was it Friday? I think it was Friday. You throw a little bit of the brown or the yellow with that brown and it looks really neat. And just a little bit of sunlight kissed our tree trunks right here. Not crazy. We I mean, want to leave, you know, some sides yellow and the other side brown. I don't want to overdo it obviously. like 
so, guys. I'm gonna come back in, put a little bit of yellow ochre on the on the button, and do it upside down, right? We're not gonna like this. We want our grass to be kind of facing up. Just dab it in just a couple little bits. That way, it's irregular and it's got this cool shape down there. Now we'll throw our grass in down here. I think there's a big rock that sits right here, and then we'll be done. for this one get it nice and thick and goopy on there and then we're just going to come back in and just pop a little bit of these thick textured grassy bits in there just like that we're over that rock again just like that guys we have a pretty good representation of you know what his look like right there I could make my rocks a little bit more white to kind of match his, but I kind of like the way they look. I love these trees over here, like this wind-blown look. Love all the colors down in here. We gotta add a couple flowers. Our little flowery bits. We'll just get some, like some brownish little green stems, okay, coming up. It's very small. Very small. And we'll just come in and start dropping little globs of paint on for our flowers, right? I change the color. Come in, a little bit of orange, a little bit of red. Put some pink bits in there. And we're just literally grabbing it up nice and goopy onto our liner brush and dropping it on. It's very simple. Very simple. Do that crimson. Some of that rose to make a rose, right? Just 
just a nice little messy little flower shape. Pretty good representation of his painting, and uh, looks pretty good. Pretty good. These little thick bits of grass over there. Just like that, we're all done, guys. Look at this sucker. Look at this thing. Zoom in on that. All right? Maybe we can move the camera a bit so it's in the middle. And we can get some better zoom. Look at this sucker right here. So just about under an hour and we did a Van Gogh uh, you know, wheatgrass with cypress. I think is what it's called. Showed you guys the picture already. I'll show it to you again right now, real quick. And yeah, I think we did a pretty good representation of that. Again, we could have made our clouds a little thicker. While I'm thinking about it, I can sort of do right now. Man, it's giving these nice, thick, like, little textured look. You never paint clouds with a palette knife, you need a lot of paint. And just give them a lot of movement. Lots of movement. Like the wind is just sitting there blowing through like crazy. Just whoosh. Looks really good actually. It's all thick over there. It's just there's so much movement in this painting right here. Comes up, makes this whoosh. Alright, dangerous to do when you're all done have done this before, but we just want to have these kind of swooping, whooshing clouds going through the whole thing, right? And mine are a little bit too blended, so we're doing them right now. Want to be careful, though. Be careful. And try not to make anything in a straight line. That's what happens when you get these palette knives, you get these straight lines. Pushing it on, letting it break, almost like the, almost like we do on the mountains. Just giving the sky all this movement, right? All this stuff going everywhere. Take some of our blue and throw it in there. You just play with it. 
that's a pretty good representation of his painting. And just like that with our palette knife, we just knock out a couple of them little colors. Mixing our blues and our whites together. It's giving our sky all this movement, right? You can, just, you can hear the wind blowing through the sucker. You can just hear it whipping through our whole skyscape, cloudscape, right? Just blowing like crazy. I like it. I've never done a sky like this before. So again, try something new, right? Try something new. Never know how it'll turn out until you do it. This bit we kind of touch with our palette knife right there, so just to get rid of that mark, we're gonna do that. <clears throat> just like that, guys. Perfect, well, in my opinion anyway, perfect representation of what Van Gogh did. I changed up a couple of the colors. And the rocks and a couple different colored bushes and flowers and stuff. Really like the textured clouds in the sky. So, like I said, I enjoy painting it. Hope you guys enjoy painting it. And I hope you try this one with me. Go to my store, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Of course, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at happy little landscapes. And of course, subscribe on YouTube, right? The more subscribers I get, the more people I reach. The more we can get to the channel, the more free videos I can get, bring to you guys, okay? So share the link. I hope you uh, try this one. When you try it, share the link, post it so other people can come and they can learn how to paint the scene with us. And uh, I'm counting on you guys to reach everyone that I can't, right? I can only reach so many. So if you share this, you can reach more and bring them to the channel and we can paint every day, right? That is the dream and the goal. To be able to paint every day just with you, right? So. Again, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we're going to say goodbye because we always ramble on at the end too much, and uh, there won't be too many bloopers with this one, I don't imagine, so going to have to catch the next video for those. But uh, yeah, you guys take care, and have a great day.